and uh, we're going into part two of your surge is in your Brain. your surge is in your Brain. your surge is in your uh -huh. so tonight I just believe you got a spirit of Nike on you the word Nike comes from the Greek Nikeo which just means touch your neighbor and say just do it just do it Bishop I, I had a rough week just do it just do it Bishop I got bad news just do it just do it Bishop it don't feel like I'm so just do it just Lift your Bible. Let's say it together. I am unconditionally loved by God and at harvest. I come to him just as I am, but I won't stay as I am because the message I'm prepared to receive will make me more like the great I am. I am blessed and I am favored in Jesus' name. Remain standing. Go to Psalm chapter 50. Psalm chapter 50. Somebody holler surge. Yes, uh, Psalm chapter 150. Psalm 150. If you don't have it, just look on the screens there. Or look on your neighbor's phone. Make sure they actually got the Bible up. And they're not trying to sneak an episode or something that's, not, I don't know, something. I'm saying, if they are, you tell on them too. And one of my blue coaches is going to help them find the Lord. Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Now, sanctuary, look, look at me, it, it means right there, it doesn't mean a room per se. It means with a sacrifice. Touch, touch your neighbor and say, get out of your comfort zone. Which means God said, it, he ain't even really paying it that much attention until you're out of your comfort zone. Say, praise him in the sanctuary. Then it says, praise him in the mighty firmament. That just means in the heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel or the tambourine and the dance. Praise him with string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Look at the neighbor and say, God likes it loud. That was the wrong neighbor. Look at the other one and say, God likes it real loud. So now you know why you be riding down the street with your music so loud. You just acting like the Lord. He likes it loud. God ain't no little church mouse. Praise him with the clashing symbols. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you got breath in your body, you ought to be shouting. You ought to be clapping. You ought to be moving your feet. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Say it with me. Praise ye the Lord. Uh, Father, I decrease that you might increase. Speak to us now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. As you take your seats, top five, two or three people, tell them your surge is in your praise, your surge. Uh, yes, sir, let's move through this. Uh, in this series, we're learning simple biblical principles that can create surges, say surge, which are sudden, powerful, forward, or upward movement in every area of our lives. Now, this week's principle that we started uh, this weekend was that your surge was in your praise. And I told you that when I say praise, I'm combining both praise and worship, meaning we are celebrating and appreciating God because he's worthy. Praise is often given to God because of something he's done. But worship, watch this, whether he does anything or not, he's still worthy of worship. Because worship comes from the uh, old uh, Anglo-Saxon word, which means worship. There be W-O-R-T-H, meaning the worth of something, which means if something is, this better not happen again to this mic again. I tell you, it's going to be some smoke up in this here sanctuary. Let it happen again. Y'all be like, what happened to this and that? I, I tell you. But <laughs> <laughs> Say, he's still worthy. Whether the mic want to trip with you or not, he's still worthy. Praise is for something that he does often, but worship is just because of who he is. Watch this, which means, watch this, if God never does anything for you, whether you become a Christian or not, he's still worthy because he's still valuable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So in part one, we looked at uh, Je King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we learned this, that number one, your praise is your what? Tract, T-R-A-C-T, which is a synonym for position. You remember the story. I'll give it to you again very briefly. You remember that there were enemies coming at them from three specific places. The Ammonites, which means people problems. Uh, there were then issues that were coming from the Moabites, which means generational curses or generational dysfunctions, and then they had issues coming at them from Mount Seir. Mount Seir now represented making the same bad decisions over again, creating circular movement. But can I give you another revelation about Mount Seir? Mount Seir, watch this, because it was the past mountain that they kept walking around. Mount Seir represents when past situations resurface again and tempt you to repeat the same circular motion that got you messed up in the first place. Sometimes it'll feel like deja vu to you because it is deja vu because you're being tested on it again because evidently God says you didn't learn the first time so I brought it back around to see if you're going to do right this time. See, the last time you got offended, you got all mad and you did this and you did that. And God says, well, let me bring you back around that mountain to see if you've grown at all. The last time they called you that late at night, you fell into the trap. But God says, I want, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me, but I want to see if you've made any growth. Or the last time somebody cut you off in traffic, you cussed them seven ways from Sunday. But God says, I want to see if you learn anything. Touch your neighbor say, have you learned anything yet? So now watch this, watch this, so watch this, those three enemies were coming at them, say three enemies. And as those three enemies were coming at them, uh, watch this, King Jehoshaphat, he gets scared, he calls a prayer meeting, when he calls a prayer meeting, the Lord says to them, you're not going to have to fight this battle, this battle is not yours, it's whose? Whose battle was it? And God gave them two instructions. He said, do not fear. And he said, position yourself. So then we understood from that teaching that our praise is how we take position. Say my praise is how I take position. Now watch this, meaning this, whenever we face any enemy or problem, our position should, should be to praise. And in Hebrew, there are multiple words for praise. Somebody say multiple words. Now watch this, I gave them to you. The first was yada, which means to extend your hand, signifying that you're giving God your burdens and your worries. But then there was toda, which means to extend your hand to receive things not yet received. Which means when we lift our hands in praise and worship, there's an exchange that's going on. God says, give me your drama and I'll give you my direction. Give me your frustration and I'll give you my favor. Give me your grief and I'll give you my grace. Give me your problems, I'll give you a promise. Touch your neighbor and say, when I lift my hands, there's an exchange happening. That is why if you've never noticed that when you start going through stuff and you get stressed out and you get worried, it becomes very difficult to even sometimes raise your hands. Why? Because Satan knows if you lift your hands, God's going to take something. But then he's going to give you something better. You're not hearing me. I dare somebody that's going through something in their life right now to make the devil out to be alive and just throw your hands in the air. But throw them up like you do care. Because God says, I'm taking your problems and I'm exchanging it for a Shout church. But then there was the word Hallel. Hallel now where we get our word hallelujah, which is the same in every language. It is the highest praise, and it means to rave. Say rave. It means to celebrate. Say celebrate. And it means to be radical. Say radical. Now watch this. I told you this in part one, and this is so important because, watch this. I assume that when you come on Wednesday night, it's because you come thirsty. Anybody can come on a Sunday, but only thirsty people pop up on Wednesday. Let me define thirsty. Thirsty people say, God, I need way more of you in my life than an hour or two on Sunday. I need you every day of the week, and so every time they're going to have a worship experience, you better count me in. Every time my man of God is preaching, you better count me in. Because Touch your neighbor and say, I sure am thirsty. So then watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. If you're thirsty, I also then make uh, this assumption. Watch this. That you're also radical. Just your neighbor say, I'm radical. Now, now watch this, because well, sometimes Christian people like to get very, uh, very proper and very sedity and very sophisticated with their praise and with their worship. And so now because, watch this, they used to be, watch this, where they didn't have nothing, they'd shout. But now that they got a little something, hallelujah. When they didn't even know what a red bottom was, they'd shout. And now that they got them on, I ain't trying to mess up my red bottoms. Well, if it wasn't for the goodness of the Lord on your side, baby, you'd still be wearing them turn texts. Don't sit up in here and act like. And if you got turn texts on, you better shout in your turn text. Because I think of some people here at Wednesday night that say, listen, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise. Now, now touch your neighbor and say, I'm radical. That's the 
other name, but I was the one who touched him, say I'm radical. Now here's what radical people do. Radical people don't even let the sentence get finished. Radical people anticipate what's getting ready to be said and they run on that. Radical people, when it's a, a sporting event, radical people don't wait to the end of the game to start shouting. Radical people get there and they there two and three hours early because they just believe that today might be the day their teams go win. I'm just wondering if you're going to start being that way about your God. Lord, when I woke up this morning, I just was hoping. I was just thinking that today might be the day that I have the greatest victory of my life. And so I'm not waiting until the battle is over. I'm going to shout now. Look at your neighbor and say, hello him, hello him. Which, 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 which means it's radical. Say radical. No, no, I says, in our city, a lot of people like sports. And, and, and it's amazing because people would put stuff on their car to, to tell just how much they like their sports. But <laughs> now, now watch this, though. Watch this. People know just from looking at your car you're a sports fan. At work, when the Broncos are playing, you, you change your whole wardrobe for a team some of you don't even like. But, but watch this. You're so radical for a group of folk getting on the field to throw around some leather. You ain't understand what I'm saying. So I dare us change what we wear and put paint all over our face for some men to play a game. But yet you sitting up in here looking at me like he ain't never done nothing for you. I just need to know if on Wednesday night there's some people that say, I don't care what my neighbor thinks. He's been better to me than I've been to my I should be dead now. I should be in the grave now. That car accident should have killed me, but such a neighbor say your surge is in your praise. But then that fourth word was Shabbat, and Shabbat meant to what? Shout. Now, I told you this, and I taught you this, and for those that maybe it's your VIP, let me just run by it one more time. When we shout, we're not just being emotional. Touch your neighbor say, I'm not just emotional. Now, now, watch this. When we shout, because watch this, you can be emotional and not be spiritual, but you cannot be spiritual without being emotional. Emotion, by the basic etymological breakdown of the word E, out of motion, out of change. So that means our emotions arise out of change, which is why it's dangerous to follow them. Your emotions were created to serve you. You were not created to serve your emotions. That's why when you're emotional, you better just sit down somewhere before you start making decisions. Because the decision you're going to make is going to be wrong because you're making it out of change. But the change ain't permanent. So you'll make a permanent decision from a temporary location because you made it out of turbulence. But turbulence ain't going to be the whole story turbulence is just a part of the flight which means even if you got bad news it's just a little turbulence the flight's gonna be all right he ain't brought you this far for you to crash and burn he didn't save you from everything he saved you from for you to crash and burn now watch no what's this what's this what's this, what's this? What's this? What's this? touch your neighbor say shout no, no, watch this. When we shout today, our shout represents now in the Hebrew when they would blow the shofar. It's the ram's horn. And the ram's horn would call everything that was out of order into order. In fact, then when they were getting ready to have an assembly of the people, they would always blow the ram's horn because watch this. Everybody would be doing their own thing. But when they heard the ram's horn, they dropped what they were doing and they said something greater than us is going on. Which means, watch this, your kids might be doing this and that and this and that. But God says, in your Shabbat, there is an order. And the reason some of your kids act the way they do is because God says, you ain't called it in the order. And you sitting up here, well, I prayed this, I prayed this, I prayed this. That's good. But after you pray, you better Shabbat. Listen, what am I doing? I'm calling everything that's out of order. And I'm calling it into order. In my, sh I feel like preaching tonight. In my shout, there is a prayer. Bishop. What do you mean in my shout there is a prayer? This is why the Bible says that he'll speak through us through groanings. To groan in the Greek means to sigh, which means every time something comes out of my mouth, it's a prayer, even if I don't know what it means myself. They ain't going to say nothing to me, which means my sigh is really a prayer. Y'all not saying that. I've taught it before, which means my shout is really a prayer. I dare somebody that's got some out of order stuff going on in their life to just take 10 seconds and use your Shabbat. I dare somebody to follow the Bible. I dare you to use your. 
Say, come to order. Your body better get in order. Cancer better leave. Sickness better to leave. Diabetes better leave. Your family better come into order. What? What's this? I got to move. The next word was Barak, which meant to kneel down to receive the spoken blessing. Then there was now the word Zamar, which means to worship with music. Then there's the word Tehillah, which means to sing. Uh, there's several words I did not cover. There's several different words, but one of them is Kara, which means to dance. Doesn't anybody say that's why I dance? That's why I watch this for all of you who like to dance for other stuff. But in church, you sitting here parked against the seat. Because they keep, we don't let you on the wall. They ain't going to let you on the seat. I don't really do that. But if I was at home, God says, watch this. How dare you give a video what you won't give me? And I can see some of you got offended. So I'm going to dig right here because you should have just shook your head and said, preach, bishop. How dare you be sitting up doing the video dance? But then when you come to church, you're talking about, oh, I just pray. No, God says, if you're going to dance, you better dance with me. Bishop, I can't dance. Baby, if you can move, it qualifies as dance. You're not hearing me, which means if you don't know quite how to put it all in, uh, uh, in an order that makes a lot of sense to anybody else, don't worry about it, because by the time God sees it, he's going to look at it and call it praise. That's why the Bible says that David danced so much that he danced out of his clothes. Now, I want to know what kind of dance you dance to where you can get your clothes. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. No, I mean logistically, seriously. Think about it for about 15 to 20 seconds. No more than that because that's not coming out of my time. That's coming out of your time. Think about it, though. I mean, what kind of dance are you doing to where it's like, okay, drop the sleeve over here. And then you like, drop the sleeve over here. And then it's like, throw it to the back. And then, you know, and then it's like, go on, you know, how, let me take my socks off. Socks off. You know what I'm saying? How do you, how, what kind of, you know. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. But God says, that belongs to him. How dare you dance because you got your income tax check back. But you sit, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. But you sitting up in here talking about, oh, I'm too good for that. I don't do all of that. Baby, he deserves it. Touch your neighbor and say, he deserves it. Let everything that has breath take your position. Then watch this, watch this. What's this? That last word I gave you was what? Tehillah, which means to what? Sing. Just your neighbor say, you're going to have to sing tonight. Bishop, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to sing. That's fine. Most big music artists don't either. You can have a great musical career not knowing how to sing. We'll sign you on. We'll get you a deal. <laughs> somebody, somebody say, ooh, yeah. Watch this. Watch this now. Now, watch this. T touch your neighbor say, this is an important one. That's the wrong neighbor. I, I don't, you know what? Let's try using the other one for the rest of the night. The other one. Try that. <laughs> it's okay. Nothing wrong with them. Just maybe they didn't get it. It's okay. Try the other one tonight. T -t -t Touch your neighbor say, T -t -t your neighbor say, this is the important one. Bishop, so why is this one so important? All of them are very important, but this one perhaps has prominence over the others. Why, Bishop? Because Tehillah means, watch this, Psalm 22 and 3. It says, God is enthroned in the Tehillah of his people. You missed it. It said, God is enthroned in the Tehillah of his people. You missed it. God is enthroned in the, te put the verse up please, in the Tehillah of his people. Now, you, you, you still didn't get it. You, 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 you didn't get it. Now, I, I did this on, uh, in part one. I'm going to do it again so that we catch it. Touch your neighbor, you got to catch it tonight. Now, remember the appropriate neighbor to be using tonight. That other one is on suspension for the next five minutes. I'm just joking, guys. I'm being jovial. Have fun. If you can't have fun at church, where well, you're going to have fun? Some Christians can't have no fun. That's why they just go to work. They're just mad all the time. Just mad. Good morning. You need to go have you a seat with some prunes or something because you got too much going on up in there. Tell your neighbor, have fun. God likes to have fun. Bishop, how do you know? He made you. I know he likes to have fun. He made us. He likes to have fun. God plays, okay, I feel it here. God plays chess with himself. He likes to have fun. God will make a move over here. You'll be like, that's a good move. Then he'll get on the other side of the table and make another move, and it'll look like it's a contrary move to you. But since he plays both sides of the table, even if it's a move that looks contrary to you, the move really is good for you. 
And so then he jumps over here and says, I made that move. They shout, let me go over here. Now, let me make this move. Now, now they may not be shouting at first, but if they only knew that I make all things work, I dare you to do it with me. So, so I'll, I'll make a move that looks like it's against them. But really, they didn't understand that the way to us sin first begins as descent. The way for me to add first looks like subtraction. The way for me to multiply first looks like division. So I'll make a move on both sides of the table. because I. Back to the message. So he is enthroned on the Tehillah, on the singing of his people. Now, let's go back to part one. In a monarchy, monarchy, mono one archy, system of rulership, oversight, one sight, one vision, monarchy. You don't vote on what a king says. You do what a king says, or they cut you, or kill you, or eliminate you. Now, if I was preaching another message, I could say, and he's made us. Okay, but all right. <laughs> but I'm not preaching that message. Watch this, watch this now, watch this. In a monarchy, the king doesn't sit on the throne all day. And, you know, he's not just sitting on the throne all day. And in church, for God is on the throne when he's on the throne. The book tells us when he's on the throne, when we sing. Now, so that I'm clear, you don't have the power to put him up or take him down. It's whether or not, watch this, the effectiveness of who he is is seen in your life or not. So I don't want you to think, I sang today, God is on the throne, but I didn't feel it today. So no, 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 no. I, I don't want you to think you have that power. In your life, however, when we sing, God himself, hears our Tehillah, steps out of whatever he's doing and says, my people have called for me. And when they call for me, I'm enthroned or I take the seat. When God takes the throne, the king only sits on the throne for one reason. That's because he's getting ready to make decisions and decrees for whoever has come into his gates and into his court. That's why the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Well, when I do that, he takes the throne. And when he takes the throne, that means he's getting ready to make some decisions. And I don't know about you, but I want him to make some decisions in my faith. And favor means preferential treatment. Can I drop some knowledge and revelation to you? When you sing, even if it don't sound good to you, or even if it don't sound good to your neighbor, when you sing, God says, I'll make decisions that are preferential to you. Meaning they fired the rest of your department, but you, they'll make a, not hearing me. Meaning the same people that had the same credit as you got denied. But when he's on the throne, he'll give you Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Meaning that the doctor said we can't operate on this for them. But when you're a praiser, I wish I had something here. But when you're a praiser, God says they'll find a way because I made a decision in your favor. Touch your neighbor say your surge is in your praise. But then secondly, we learn that your praise is a thermostat that sets the temperature for surge. Say my praise is a thermostat that sets the temperature for surge. Now, the last few days, our weather has been, you know, this. Because it was about 80. My car said it was 78. Now, if I deduct for the margin of error, depending on how the sun hit it or whatever, all right, so it was between 75 and 80 degrees. And then the lady come on the TV. Talking about, oh, there's some snow in the forecast. I'll have it all tonight at 10. I said, I'm not watching you. You have a negative report. And the Bible says <laughs> your report is evil. In the next series we're going into, I got a message called, I hate the snow. It's going to bless you. It's really going to bless you. <laughs> it's going to be good. In the next series we're going to, the next series we're going to is getting past your past. And so one of the messages is called, I hate the snow. Because it's about a man that was in a pit with a lion on a snowy day. I, I, I talked about him before. But I'm going to deal with the snow part. I, I didn't talk about the snow. You talking let it snow. No, that is evil. That is a demonic report. You don't never, the Lord sends rain, not snow. You need to read your Bible. <laughs> now, watch this. Watch this. Say the temperature's been up and down. So here's what you did in your house. So maybe you, now I like it cold in my house. 
When I'm in my house, I like it cold. You understand? I like it cold. I, you know, like freezing cold. I know some people are like, oh, come on, open the blinds. Close them blinds. I'll simulate the sunshine. <laughs> I'll put it on the computer screen or something. Now, here's the deal. Say, say thermostat. thermostat. Now, here's the deal. Watch this. When you read the temperature of the room, you adjusted it to fit what made you comfortable. What happens in life is that, watch this, when life's up and down, what we do is we allow it to, watch this, change the temperature. But what most of us don't do is go over to the thermostat. So you got depressing news. You've been depressed for five days. Well, why didn't you just go over like you do in your house? Y'all ain't going to say anything to me. You got bad news, and, and so you oh, my God, my bad news, my bad news. Well, if it was in your house, you'd walk over to the thermostat and say, uh-uh, no, nope, 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 64, 64. You're not catching what I'm saying. I'm here to tell you this is a year of surge for you. So whenever something contrary to surge sets up in your life, don't be sitting there depressed and discouraged. Walk over to the thermostat. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Bishop, what changes the temperature? My praise changes the temperature. Let me show you another example of this. 1 Samuel 16 and 14. I got to move quick. 1 Samuel 16 and 14. Let me show you another example of this. Now, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and his stressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Say the temperature changed. And Saul's servant said to him, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Now, if I had time, I'd deal with the fact that the distressing spirit was actually from God. I don't have time to deal with that. Verse 16. Let our master now command your servant who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp, and it shall be that he will play with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be what? Well. And so it was, whenever the spirit of God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and he would zamar. Y'all missed it. Now, I just gave you all those definitions. It'd be a good class. So it would be that whenever the temperature was bad with Saul, that David would zamar, praise with instruments, which, which if we took away the with instruments, it means he would what? Praise. Look at the verse. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Y'all miss what I'm saying. That, that's verse 23. Y'all missing what I'm saying. Praise ran stress away and changed the temperature. Bishop, it's just so hard. Change the temperature. Bishop, I just feel like I don't have vision. Change the temperature. Bishop, I messed up real bad. Change the temperature. Man, you sitting up in a house hot when you got the thermostat over here. You sitting in the house cold when you got the thermostat. You sitting here depressed about what the creditor said when you got the doggone thermostat right there. Touch your neighbor and say, change the doggone temperature, man. Say it just like I said it. Now, they're going to remember that. You're talking about spiritual. They ain't going to remember that. Changes the temperature from the Lord of the third heaven. They ain't going to understand that. Now, now watch this. His praise got rid of stress. And the book says he was refreshed. Say refreshed. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He didn't eat his way to being refreshed. He didn't drug his way to being refreshed. I'm going to come down your road. He didn't Benadryl his way when he didn't have allergies. To he didn't NyQuil his way. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me? He didn't marry and Jane his way. You, you, oh, 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 y'all know about this is them, but y'all know about that. Watch this. He didn't cuss his kids out to it. And then got to bring them in a the room and repent for all the stuff you didn't say it to them. Baby, I didn't mean to say that. No, daddy just be getting stressed, son. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> we learned that praise tailors from 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. 
Now, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some new, and we're reviewing because I need this to get this. Say, my search <laughs> is in my praise. All right, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, it, it says this. They'll put it up real quick. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O praise, you inhabitants of the city of peace, Yerushalom, Yerushalom. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be what? Established. Believe his prophets, which in your case is the man of God or the past, your pastor, and you shall what? Prosper. Now, I made it clear here that prosper here, normally prosper in Hebrew, our Old Testament, normally prosper is the word shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, all is well. Here it doesn't mean that. Here it meant to break out, to be profitable. Watch this. It was tantamount to serve. Watch this now, because I believe in God. Well, good, you're established. But if you're not doing what you're learning, you ain't going to surge. It's in your Bible. I was praying to God. Great. He's, answer, he's been answering you for the last 24 minutes. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Now, now watch this, watch this. Say my praise. Taylor's. Now, to tailor is to conform to, and to conform to is to obey, and to obey is to ultimately believe. And when you're a praiser, you will believe, and proof that you believe is that you'll start doing what you're learning. Let me make it simple. When you're a praiser, it'll be easier to be a doer of what you learn, not just to hear. Touch your neighbor and say, if you'll praise God, it'll be easy to obey. See, the people that can't praise are also normally disobedient. Okay, number four, praise throttles every enemy. <laughs> I had fun with this one. <laughs> Especially at that 1115, we had some fun with that one. Say praise, praise. Throttles, throttles every enemy. Uh, so we learned that, watch this, an enemy is anything that opposes your forward progress. Which, watch this, which means an enemy could actually be you. Because your greatest enemy could be the inner me. Which means sometimes your praise, here's what it'll do. You'll know it's working because you get mad at yourself. Bishop, shouldn't it make me feel better? Uh, it'll make you feel better after it exposes to you you so that you can change you. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? Which is why sometimes the moment you leave church and the moment you step out of these doors, you're like, ugh. You should, Bishop, why? Because your praise worked. Because it throttled you not hearing what I'm saying watch this watch, watch, watch this <laughs> say my praise throttles every enemy now, now watch this watch, watch this so an enemy is anything that opposes your forward progress which means sometimes the greatest enemy is the inner me sometimes the greatest enemy we face is our mindsets sometimes you said the devil is against you sometimes the only place he's against you is in your mind Consider this, consider this, that since Satan isn't omnipresent out of the 7 billion or so people in the world he can mess with, he really came to mess with you and your car? Now, I'm just saying, just let's put some context to it. So the devil, the devil, child, the devil, if he's not omnipresent, he can't mess with you and you at the same time. Bishop, how do you know he's not omnipresent? Job chapter 1. Satan, where you been? Walking? <laughs> well, if he was omnipresent, he'd say, watching. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. He's not omnipresent because he's got to walk where he goes. Which means Satan is broken and some folk, you know, he got to walk. He can't even catch them. No, I'm trying to get you to understand something. Stop elevating him. Stop talking about the devil. Stop talking about the devil and start talking about your God. Who is your God? I thought you said you serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Well, if you do, stop giving the enemy more glory than your God. Now, back to, the, back, back to this. So, so, so it throttles every enemy. Now, an enemy is anything that opposes our forward progress. Say anything that opposes my forward progress. Now, so I just I wanted to give you some context there because it, the enemy could be a multitude of different things. If it's in the way, your praise chokes it, throttles it, which means, watch this, your praise could be throttling those family members that keep talking you out 
of obeying God's word. You're like, why am I, why? the more I pray, it seems like my family go crazy because it just went up to her. There could be friends that you call friends, but God calls distractions. And so what your praise did is your praise made them start acting crazy with you. And you're sitting there saying, God, what's going on? God is saying, it's working. Because rather than you go through a bunch of drama, I just went up and... Somebody in Atlanta is shouting about this. Somebody in Dallas is shouting about this. So, so, so watch this, watch this. An enemy is anything that opposes for progress. And to throttle means to attack or kill an enemy by, cho kill an enemy by choking or strangulation. <laughs> I love this. So your praise... takes whatever's in the way and starves it of oxygen. You, you know, this is why, this is why many, I'm going to talk to somebody. If I'm talking to you, I know I'm talking to you because you'll just stand up one time and just go like preach bishop, then I know I'm talking to you. Th th that's why some of you, it seems like the moment you feel like, whoo, I can take a break. The moment you feel that, it's like, ah, then here comes something totally. Okay, I ain't talking to nobody. Didn't nobody stand up. Okay, now let's just move on then. You want to know why? Because here's, here's what it is. Because, watch this, to starve it of oxygen, say my praise, starves enemies of oxygen. Here's what it's going to try to do sometime. Now, if you've ever seen a movie where someone is in the process of being strangled, what do they normally do? Try to fight. But watch this. The fight is an indication that it's being starved. I'm going to tell some of you, the reason it seems like the struggle has intensified in certain areas of your life is proof that it's being starved of its oxygen. Your bad money practices are being starved of action. Your generational curses are being starved of oxygen. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Tell your neighbor, say he's starving of oxygen. All right, watch this. I got to move. So watch this. When we praise, God says ambushes against what's opposing our forward progress. Then number five, uh, and then I got to get to this last one. Can I give you the last one here? Number five, praise troubles what's troubling you. And I told you this in part one, that your biggest battle often come from the place of your, uh, your biggest blessing. Or excuse me, your biggest blessing, rather, comes from the place of your biggest battle. Because the level of battle indicates the level of blessing. Great battle? Punk battle? Let me define punk. Punk means average. Lacking. Lackluster. All the people that you look at and say, my God, really? See, here's what I need you to understand. Here's what I need you to understand. The way, your, the way your life's going to go is one of two ways. Either you're going to be what you don't want to be, or you're going to be uh, and have the courage to be what nobody else in your bloodline would be. Well, one, of, one of the most sad things is when you talk to somebody, or when you're talking to them, you're like, you're settling. You're just rolling over, just taking it. But if you learn how to battle, you learn how to be blessed greatly. Did you catch what I just said? I, I, was, talk, I was talking to, I was talking to, I was talking to, I was doing some business stuff the other day. I was talking to this individual who was a very su first, a successful person, and they were uh, uh, talking to me, and they were talking about the thing, and they said, Bishop, can I just, can I just speak real candid? I was on the line with another bishop. And they were talking some business stuff with us. And they said, Bishop, can I, just, can, I, can I just be very candid with you? I said, well, you know, that to me, that's like, when you know when people say, can I be honest with you? So I'm like, well, you've been lying the whole time? I thought that was the premise of our discussion. I thought you were telling me the truth the whole time. And, 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 and she, she was a go-getter type of person. She, she had ran a lot of different businesses and organizations and things like that. And she was a go-getter. And I, I, like, I like folks that make stuff happen. I don't, oh, I, ain't just, you know, I don't like all that. She, and so she was talking. I was like, well, I'm going to listen to you. And I said, I'm going to listen to you just because I like what you're saying. I said, I don't know about the rest of this, but I like what you're saying. And here's the point I wanted to get to. As she was talking, she said, Bishop, can I just be candid? I said, please do. 
She said, we live in a nation of quitters. And she said, we live in a nation of people that, and then she began to share a story. And, and I said, I guess you're trying to preach, ain't it? I said, let me send you a license because you're preaching without one. Let me send you a license. Here, here's the point. Here's the point. You got to get this in your spirit. Don't let battles, watch this, block you. Don't let battles depress you. You know what a battle is evidence of? You're getting ready to take some spoil. You ask for a greater life, which means you're going to have to have some great battles. But the battle means there's some spoil on the other side of this. And that's why the book says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes. You better last to the morning. You better not punk out. You better not lay down. You better not stop. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm one of them. What is that? You're a surgeon, which means, baby, I don't die. I just multiply. You knock me back, I'm like a bobblehead. I'll just come back at you another way. But what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Num number five, praise troubles what's troubling you. Wherever you have big battles, there's big blessing. Say big battle, big blessing. Can, can I say it another way? All right, say big drama, big deliverance. Yeah, yeah. Say big opposition, big opportunity. Stop thinking that because it's God, it's supposed to be easy. All right, number six, number six, number six, number six. I got to move. I'm out of town. Number six. Say praise, thanks. Now, now, I want to show you another story here because you remember from Second Chronicles chapter 20 and, uh, and uh, chapter 20, we looked at how they were three days collecting the spoils from the battle. And they named the place the Valley of Baraka, which is the Valley of Blessing or the Valley of Barak. Remember, before they went out to battle, before they ever went to battle, they kneeled down to receive the spoken blessing of the Lord, which means it teaches us a principle that before we ever have an issue, if we're praisers, God will already decree the blessing about the thing before we ever get into the thing, so that when we get into the thing, he's already spoken how we're coming out of the thing. Do you understand this? Which means all I'm doing is walking out something he already told me how it's going in. People say, how that's going to work out for you? Wonderful. Well, how you know that? Because before I ever got here, I was a praiser. And since I'm a praiser, I already know this thing has worked out. You ain't stressed out about this? No, I'm not stressed out about this. My praise knocked this out in 14. My 14 praise already done dealt with everything I'm facing this year. Watch this. Got you get this. Number six, praise, thanks. Say it, thanks. Now, I want you to see another story. This is a familiar passage, but I, I want to show you some new revelation. Revelation means to uncover that which is hidden. Sometimes it's right in front of you, but it's hidden to you because you don't know how to dissect it to receive the revelation from it. That's why the scripture says in Amos chapter 3 that the Lord God does nothing except he first reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets, which means God keeps secrets about you from you that are about you, watch this, that he reveals through your pastor. That's why when you come in, you're like, oh, I thought it was this. And then you'll sit here in one message. You've been struggling with something for 15 years, and you'll hear one line in the message. and be like, for real, though? I think I got a few witnesses that know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, that's why you send those praise reports. Like, it's got, he, that man got cameras in my house. Baby, that ain't a man. That's God speaking through a man. God loves you so much that he'll take these words and he'll customize them and tailor make them for your life. Put the verse up so they can see it. So the Lord God does nothing, no thing, unless he first reveals a secret to his servants, the prophets, which in your case is the men of God passing. Watch this now. Say praise, thanks. And I'm getting ready to close. Acts 16.25. Now, you know this story. I'm going to have them put the verse up. You know this story. Touch anybody and say, you know this story. Okay, now we can take that other neighbor off of punishment. They've been acting good. Now, watch this. Paul and Silas are locked up. You know the story, but I'm going to show you something. Don't, don't go ahead of me, praise, because some of y'all, like, you ready to shout now. Like, hallelujah, I know. And then at midnight, don't, don't go ahead of me. Just, just stay with me. Stay just right here. Stay with me. Now, watch this. I taught about this in the message, The Valley of Midnight. You should get the series through the valley. Uh, you should get that series, a good series. I taught about it. Now, now watch this. Say, at midnight. But at midnight, Paul and Silas, watch the sequence. They were strategically praying. Where did we get last week? Your surge is in your strategic prayer. And they were Tahila. 
To who? God. Who is listening? The prisoners. Who else was listening? God. Who else was listening? The enemy. See, when you begin to praise, your enemy gets very afraid. And why does he get, a, and not just a him, but a them, a they, an it. A, an enemy is a noun, person, place, thing, or idea that opposes you for progress. Why do enemies get afraid when they hear you praising? Because when he sits down, there ain't nothing. They can say whatever they want to say. They can lie however they want to lie. They can do whatever they want to do. But when he sits down, it's a done deal. Because a king does not argue for authority in his kingdom. Verse, here it is. Somebody holler, but. I said, holler, you said it loud. But at midnight. Why does the Bible say midnight? Now, is it just giving us a chronological time period or is it giving us a, a, a time period that's more than chronological? Could it be uh, that this particular time period is not just uh, uh, a duration of time, but could it be that this particular time period is uh, not just chronos in the Greek, chronological, one, two, three, four, five. Could it be that this is a chrono, or excuse me, could it be that this is a kairos type of time? In Greek, there were, there were a few words, but there were two primary words for time. One was chronos, one, two, three, four, five. The other was kairos. Kairos meant, watch this, not a quantity of time, but a quality of time. So when a kairos moment occurred, watch this. In fact, the word kairos was created later on after the original word chronos. Can I teach you for a minute? After the original word chronos was created because they needed to find another way to define that which at the time was undefinable. You ever look back on something and said, I don't even know how to explain it. And then it took you a while to come up with it. That's how the word kairos came into being. And they look back over time and said, you know, we can't call that chronos because it's not. Because it wasn't one, two, three, four, five. Because the sequence doesn't even make sense how it happened that way. So we have to call it something else. So they created a word called kairos. Which meant a kairos moment is where heaven interjected itself into earth. Okay, this is too much. All right, that's fine. Acts 16, 25. But at midnight. So it's not just giving us a chronological time, it's giving us a kairos time. But so what are you trying to tell me? The situation looked bad. Here's the trip about midnight. Is, why didn't it just say, well, it was dark? Why did it say midnight? Because at midnight, something supernatural has happened. I said, what do you mean supernatural? At the same time, it is yesterday, but at the same time, it is tomorrow. But in the moment I'm in it, it's just now. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all not catching me because some of y'all look at me confused. That's okay. At the same time, one foot's in my past, one foot's in my future, and I'm here, and it's just now. Can I take it another further? Because you're Wednesday night. Touch your neighbor. Say this is important. So for some of you, you don't know that the day's already changed. Because, watch this, it still looks like yesterday, and you can't quite picture tomorrow. All you know is I'm just here now. Mm, but then there's somebody else. Touch your neighbor says midnight. Touch the other one says midnight. All right, so now it's yesterday and another day, but I'm in the now. But then watch this, say it's midnight. But when it's midnight... Although it's still dark, it's a new day. But watch this. Can I tell you something else? That also means the sun ain't up yet. What were they doing before the sun got up? They were commanding. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that when life doesn't look good, that's the best time to start. You missed it. You missed it. Why did it tell us this? Because while it was a chronological time, it was more of a Kairos time. Because in their, in their midnight, not only did they command the day that was to come, but in their midnight, they were not, touch your say this is important. Say this is very important. Okay, but in their midnight, not only did they command the day, but they also enthroned God. So in their worst moment, 
Jehovah Jireh. Elohim. El Shaddai. The great I am. In their worst moment, he looks down and says, parts in yesterday, parts in the future, they're just in the now. They're trying to break out of that. Hmm, they're trying to surge out of that. And it's good they're commanding their day, but what is that going on? Is that, is that singing? That's why the scripture says things like, let God arise. Are they Tehillahing down there? Okay. The moment they started praising, the surge began. But notice they were still praising while they were still still locked up. Say Kairos. You know the greatest, you know when your praise is for real, for real? Is when you're in this Kairos moment. Of where one foot is like, oh my God. One foot is like, I think it's going to work. But all I know is I'm just here now and it's dark. But even though it's midnight, midnight is proof that another day's coming. Midnight is the first fruit of a new day. I thought y'all were Wednesday night. I thought I could teach it here. What, what, what's this? What, what's this? What's this? What's this? T touch your neighbor and say, you're in a Kairos moment. This is what do you mean Kairos moment? It, it's because, watch this. God says, touch your neighbor and say, God says, God says, even while you're in a midnight, anybody got some midnights going on? And here's the trip about a midnight. It can be day in one area of your life, and then over here it be midnight. Your career can be doing great, but over here it's like, ugh. Watch this. God says, I want your celebration before you conquer. Watch this. I want your praise before it's paid for. Verse. Here, here it is. I only got one more verse to do. I'm over time, but I figured y'all y'all came to Wednesday, so you're thirsty. So let me go on and fill you up till you overflow. But at midnight, Chronological, Chronos and Kairos at the same time. They started commanding the day. Now notice it doesn't tell you what they were saying. It just tells you that they were praying. Now if you don't know what we mean when we say commanding the day, you need to get the teachings from the bookstore. Just tell them, I want to, let's see, talking about command and all this here, just tell them, just say command, they got you. Watch this, they were praying, say commanding the day. Well, watch what they did and watch what they added to their prayer. See, here's what most of us do, we pray. Blah, 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 in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to show you something powerful. Look at what they did. They commanded the day, and they tehillahed. And they praised. And they, I got somebody that's going to get it. And they sang. And the prisoners were listening to them. Now consider, they're all in the same scenario. So you got to imagine it's pretty intimidating to praise and talk about how great your God is when the people you're praising God in front of are in the same mess you're in. Can you be honest? That's why sometimes it's difficult for you to even be uh, 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 very boistru uh, boisterous and vociferous with your praise because you're like, well, I, I, you know, I'm in the same situation as them. So I don't even know if they want to hear about my Jesus now because I asked them for a ride here. I'm going to tell you, don't you worry about nobody else when it comes to praising God. Because they were all locked up. But watch verse 26. Touch your neighbors and here go the surge. Suddenly, sounds like a surge to me. When they prayed and praised. When they commanded the day and sang. Somebody shout suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately, not 10 days from now, not next year at this same time, and immediately all the doors were open and everybody, you know, I'm not hearing what I'm saying. Your whole bloodline is going to come out on your praise. Your whole family's coming out on your praise. Listen, what are you saying? Your praise has got the ability to jump out of your mouth and to hop over to somebody else's chain and set them free. Watch. An earthquake shook everything around them. Now, 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 let me see it real quick. Let me see it real quick. I want to get this to you. I want to get this to you. We're going to go in. 
Amen. So what do you mean by go in? We're getting ready to praise him. We're getting ready to hallel him. But I want to make sure you get this first. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open. Watch. And everybody's chains. The same people that would have been intimidating to praise God in front of because you're in the same situation as them. We're loose. Watch. An earthquake shook everything around them. Now imagine what they thought when the earthquake first started. And here's what you need to know about this area geographically. Earthquakes were common. So an earthquake, catch, catch this, an earthquake in itself wasn't unusual. What this earthquake did was. This is what are you trying to say? God, through your praise, because you're looking for this big old boom, he's going to use something that's usual. Come here, class. He's going to use... I'm trying to tell you because you're going to miss it if you're not taught to look for it. Because you're expecting God to step out of heaven and boom. God says, I'm going to use something that's usual. Earthquakes were usual in this part of the earth. But what this earthquake did was significant. Some of the stuff you're dealing with, the reason it doesn't even phase you that much is because you're like, well, I can deal with this before. It's usual. But this one, but this time, I ain't got nobody to say nothing to me. But this time, it's going to do something unusual. The earthquake was usual, but it did something unusual. The earthquake was natural, but it did something supernatural because they're praise. Which means you may be dealing with something you've dealt with before. You've dealt with lack before. You've dealt with issues before. But this time. And immediately. Somebody say immediately. 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 All the doors were open and everyone's changed loose. An earthquake shook everything around them. Watch this, y'all. But it wasn't sent to kill them. It was sent to set them free. They said, what's going on in my life? It's not going to kill you. It's setting you free. Bishop, it's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking. It's not going to kill you. See, I'm here to tell somebody, because some of y'all walked up in here thinking it was the end of the earth because you got a piece of mail. It will not kill you. Some of you think it's the end of the earth because you got a doctor's report. It will not kill you. ain't come this far to die because of that. What, what's this? <laughs> Could it be that what you've been complaining about was exactly what you needed because you wouldn't have listened any other way? I got one that's right. I got three that's right. I, can't, I lost count. All right, watch this. Notice, y'all. It opened everybody's doors and everybody's chains were loose, meaning that everybody around them surged because of their praise. So you know the power of when we're in church on Wednesdays? The power of being in church on Wednesday is that, watch this, we get Kronos and Kairos. You, you, you missed it. This is what do you mean? Well, another day's coming, Kronos. But the Kairos of the moment is the sun's down. Which means I get to go and reset anything and everything that any enemy, the arrows by day and the terror by night, any, that any of that was trying to set for me, I get to reset it. And I get to, watch this, I get the ability to not just pray, but I get to combine that with my praise. And I create a surge. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Are you sure you caught that? Look at verse 27. Just for fun, I'll get to you. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners have fled, drew the sword and was about to kill himself. Watch the next verse. But Paul called to a loud voice and said to him, No, boy, don't do nothing to you. Don't do nothing to you. Don't hurt yourself, boy. Sat down somewhere. Have your seat. Have several seats. Do yourself no harm. Everybody's here. Now, I could preach about something totally different right there. I won't. Notice they could have ran away, but they didn't. Next verse, next verse. 
Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Watch this next verse. And he brought out them out and said, Sirs, sirs, what must I do to be saved? You want to know who this guy is? I'm just giving you this because it's Wednesday night. This is the guy who started the Philippian church. This is him. You're missing it. What you're in right now, the people that are going to watch you surge are going to come around and say, sir, <laughs> ma'am, I've been watching you struggle for a little while, but the way you came up out of that, I've been watching you deal with some problems for a little while, but the way you searched up, what must I do? To be saved. Y'all ready to give it to him? Yeah. Father, we hallel you tonight. We bless you and honor you tonight, sir. You are great and greatly to be praised. Everybody standing with me. And so tonight, we use what we've learned. We combine our prayer with our praise. And tonight, we say, be glorified. We reset every negative thing that was said in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Wednesday night. Give it to him. Give it to him. Come on, Wednesday night. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Hallel means out of your comfort zone. I give you, we got three minutes to get this done. You got to come on. Out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone. For somebody, maybe you just should walk out of your seat so you can feel yourself getting out of your comfort zone. Somebody maybe needs to come at the altar and just walk the altar. Somebody maybe just needs to get out of their seat. Somebody, whatever you need to do, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of it. 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 Hallel the Lord. Hallel the Lord. Come on, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Raise it up. Hallelujah. 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 Our praise is fighting for us. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up tonight, Wednesday night. Come on, if you're watching online, lift up your praise. Lift up your worship. Lift up your hallel. Give it to him. 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 I don't feel like you're getting out of your comfort zone yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on and lift it up to him. We magnify you. We glorify you. We rock you. We speak well of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, Wednesday night live. Come on, two more minutes, two more minutes, two more minutes. Press. 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 Give him 60 more seconds. Yeah. 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 Do 
over it after music.